Hello and welcome to the Performance Centre here at Howley Hall Golf Club in Leeds. I'm Ryan Rastel, equipment expert for Golfshake.com and today we're doing a little bit of something different. So we're going to test some golf balls from Titleist and we're going to test some through the ages. But before we get into doing that, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, see loads more content from all of us here at Golfshake to help you play more and play better. Right, let's take a look at these golf balls. Like I said, we're going to take a look at some of the tightest golf balls throughout their kind of history. So we're going to start with a golf ball that was made in the 1970s. This is the Akushnet DT golf ball from Titleist. This has a surlin cover, um, it's pretty rubbery to the kind of feel and quite a long way from the golf balls that we see these days. Then slightly later than that we've got the Tour 90 golf ball which 90 compression. This time we've got a bit more technology in there. So we've got a liquid core surrounded by rubber and then it's kind of wound elastic around that. And this time it's got a Ballata cover, which a lot of you will have used Ballata golf balls in the past. They weren't the most durable, but they did feel fantastic. Then we move on a little bit, the Professional 90, which is the golf ball I started using when I first started playing the game of golf. And this really was a, a step on again from the Tour 90 golf ball. Again, the 90 means it's 90 compression. We know that by the red numbers type this used to put on there. If it was 100, you used to have the black number. The difference in this was the urethane that was used in the cover for the first time on the Professional 90 golf ball. So very similar technology to the Tour 90 in that we had a liquid filled core wound around that and then this new, instead of Ballata, this urethane cover that was on there as well. So this made the ball a bit more durable, it made it come off the face a little bit quicker and controlled the spin a bit more. We're also going to put it up against the flagship golf ball that Titleist have had out now for over 20 years, which is the Pro V1 and this is the latest version of Pro V1. We're going to start by hitting a pitching wedge, then a 7-iron and a driver with all four of these golf balls and then we're going to show you exactly what differences there are. Now that we've had a chance to hit all four of these golf balls with the three clubs we're talking about, let's have a look at pitching wedge to start with. We can see that from basically the same or very similar club head speed with a pitching wedge, there's very different results when we're talking about distance, but also the amount of spin. So let's start with the oldest golf ball here. So the DT, we would expect that to perform the worst in terms of distance and it does. So it's gone about 123 yards on average, which when we compare that to the longest golf ball, which no surprises is Pro V1, it's over 10 yards shorter with a pitching wedge. And if we look at the spin rate, that's one of the reasons why. So we're over 10,000 RPM when we're talking about the DT. And when we look at Pro V1, we're under 9,000. When we move on to seven iron, again, we can see quite a big difference in the balls through the ages as we'd expect. So let's start with DT again. We're gonna keep going back to this because obviously this should perform the worst and, and it is, you know, considering this golf ball was made in the 1970s, we'd expect something more modern to perform better. But we can see that in terms of the distance, I'm getting with seven iron, 164 yards, which is okay. But when we compare that to 178, 179 with Pro V1, you can see again, there's that huge difference. So we're, we're talking what about 13, 14 yards there in terms of distance, which is which is you know it's a club, a club and a bit longer. When we take a look then with the driver, this is the one where I was expecting to see the biggest difference in the performance in these golf balls, and we can certainly see that's the case. So, again, we'll start with our friend the DT, 1970. Five to 79, this golf ball was being manufactured. So completely different golf clubs it was being made for as well. We've got to think about that, but let's look at the performance. So 258 total carry, sorry, 275 total, 161 ball speed. And you can see that's 10 miles an hour down on the current Pro V1 that we're seeing here. But look at the spin. So 3,300 RPM on average with this. And we can see there dispersion is very, very different. And particularly, I draw your eye to where Pro V1's gone. So I've hit three, what I'd consider decent strikes with these and look at Pro V1, just how accurate it is. And I think that's gonna be the main 
difference here in the technology that we see in these modern golf balls is they're designed to go so much straighter. It's because the cores are so much bigger, which almost perimeter weights the golf ball. When we think about that with a driver, perimeter weighting was all the rage when obviously titanium was being brought in and things to make the heads more stable. Certainly when we see with the DT, there's a couple there I haven't struck particularly well and they've moved loads in the air from right to left particularly. So that really tells you that the players in the 90s, 80s, 70s that were playing with these types of golf balls and still shooting 65, 66s in tournaments, they were very, 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 very good at golf. These are completely different style and you'll see that Obviously, the, the modern golfer swings it quite different as well. Back in the day, players would be shaping the ball a lot more with these, whereas nowadays everything is, is much straighter and certainly less emphasis on shaping the golf ball. But we can see here why these modern golf balls perform so much better when we're hitting full shots with wedges, seven irons and drivers. So following on from the ball test that we've done on some of the older Titleist models, I thought I'd cut one of them in half. This is a Torbalata 100, which is liquid in the middle, so there's gonna be water that comes out of this golf ball, rubber core, and then we've got loads of elastic bands uh, wound around that core and then the cover. So we're expecting uh, some fireworks here. So let's go, let's try and cut this in half. The liquid core and the elastic bands. Look at that, all the elastic bands flying out. <laughs> Mental, that isn't it? Bands. Gel core, mental, wrapped in elastic bands. Probably been in there for like what, 35 years, 40 years.